Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I want to verify everything is working because we're back on our stream labs again. Always looking to upgrade. As you can see, we're, we're actually, actually preparing for what this channel will look like coming 2024. So you will see me bouncing around trying out some of the, the actual default um, templates that they give you with this program before I, as they say, dive in uh, with my pockets and then get all the other features that this, uh, this is uh, Streamlabs, I believe, where I will be able to bring on guests once I can, of course, you know, get someone who uh, will have the at, will have the at heart the needs of the currently well performing or working church musicians. So I say welcome to Sub Zero and Andrew who have made themselves known. There are eight currently watching. Uh, I only ask that you would let me know who you are so I can acknowledge you. You like to always welcome guests. But if you don't know who their names are, it kind of makes it hard to acknowledge you. But you don't have to. I just give you that option to be able to share. And where you're from, because I am seen around the world, I believe as far away as New Zealand, Africa, Romania, um, China, Japan, Thailand. I'm just thinking about all of the different, uh, in, my, in my analytics, I can see who watches me when I do go not just live but also post the video so I want to thank all of those who for the first 10 months of this year 2023 has helped me in achieving the most views um, the most um, monetary you pretty much doubled what I was getting last year in monetary which has helped me to invest in some new equipment to give a much better presentation and um, it's encouraging when, when I can post a video and on some of these shorts, which I've started doing, I've got so many shorts out there. For me, viral is anything over, over 1,000. I know some people can get 300,000 in their uh, content creation genre. Of course, we're not in the sense, well, yeah, we are in a sense competing with, with, with each other. Those of us that are in this, um, this field of static noise, that may be how I have it attached to me. Let me switch that. Thank you for posting that. It may be too close to my chin as I'm moving around in this chair. Give me a second to squeeze this and make it Okay, how does that sound? I'm actually looking at the signal. One, two, three, testing. Let's bring this up a little bit to here. I was worried about whether or not I was in a good spot for it. That should take care of the static, I hope. Do I know the hymns song, O oh Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go? No, I am not familiar with that hymn. Uh, it didn't meet any of, I said I didn't see it in any of the hymnals. Uh, from the uh, the actual denominations I play for. Better? Thank you. Again, that's why I like to have people let me know that they're here. So if they hear something wrong, I can see your your post. Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that song. I would suppose I could look it up on YouTube and get a picture for it. Is that one of the songs, Andrew, that you're looking to learn? Also, I want to thank those who are being simulcast to my face Facebook page and my Sound of Joy Facebook group. Um, I've been posting also the same um, shorts that I post on YouTube. They are made, are they called Reels? I believe they're called Reels on the Facebook site. And some of those have gone viral. Even I was surprised when I would see over 10,000 views on just one on just one posting. The I think I've picked up an additional 2,000 followers on my Facebook page because they liked what I am posting, what I am sharing, 
not just with the church community of musicians, but mu musicians in general. If if a if an R and B groove hits my ears, I have no problem posting that because I realize music is music. It's the matter of who's in interpreting it. And yes, I've had my uh, some of my posts critiqued, which which again I don't I don't feel bad of. Of course, when I talk about jazz, it's like if I were, if I'm communicating in another language and I'm and I am mispronouncing how that language is done, I expect someone to say no. That's not how it's said. Well, that's what I've gotten also from my Facebook post. Again, I am not uh, not throwing shade on them if they're watching. I appreciate being corrected. I always want to be correct. Not perfect, but I don't mind being corrected. And then I will, of course, put that correction on that video. Because my intent is always to give another point of view of how you can approach gospel music by using the sounds of different genres. So I do appreciate not only those of the YouTube family of membership that that views me, but those who also view me from the Facebook page. Sometimes I'll post something on Facebook that YouTube doesn't see, and a lot of times I'll post on YouTube something and I'll put a link for the Facebook people to see. Two different. How you doing, Louis Bentley? That's how that works. So what's happening for the month of November? I'm still doing the viewer request some are now coming outside of the YouTube comment section. They're coming through me from Facebook because, again, I do post on the Facebook site also. Some are com coming to me directly to my email. And uh, if they're going through YouTube to the email, it'll get posted on YouTube. But if it's a personal one, then I work that out with them and then they'll get that video. Um, of course, I have the Patreon site. My Patreon site is not really being pushed, but it is being shown at least it was being shown on the on the other OBS page. The Patreon site is where for five dollars a month you can become a supporter of what I'm doing here in this space, which means that five dollars a month helps me with newer lights, with a newer camera, with a faster computer, with subscribing to us uh, to um, outside um, video chat software so that I can give a much a better presentation and what the Patreon members get from me for that $5 support every month is they get MIDI files from me, they get texts of broken down songs with the chords and the notes all written out on the paper, they get special video to, to them, and they get the option to ask me for a viewer request and I will give them that song with the music in the background which I cannot do here on YouTube. So yes, I give those who are on the Patreon site which means they are a patron of my, of my uh, uh, service here on the YouTube platform, gives them an opportunity to support me monthly, or if they, again, they can, you can join for one month and quit the next month, come back another two months after that, but you'll still get access to whatever is posted or has been posted. And I've been posting on that site since January, so they have 10 months of information, and they're going to get more, for the month of November going into December because now we're going into the Thanksgiving season the Christmas season so I will be posting MIDI files in that uh, for songs that they can learn on their own or just have in their own reference file and I'll be breaking down some of your more traditional well, I'll call it secular Christmas songs now I've done some of that here on YouTube but now with a, a different setup and with the Cordy app, now I'll be able to go a lot further and actually play in the background. But that will be for those on the Patreon site because they are monthly supporters to what I'm doing. So, And I appreciate everyone for your views and I would hope that you are, su you are subscribed. I think as I, as I monitor my YouTube analytics, I'm getting more subscribers coming back to view the videos than I am new viewers, and that's encouraging. Usually it was the other way around, but uh, I like to believe that I'm giving a content or a, a quality of content that every time you're doing learning a video that someone else has requested, it's one that you're also benefiting from. So I'm very aware of what I'm doing and how I'm actually actually presenting it. We have seven who are watching. Let me just, I'm, 
you get more information on this new site that I'm on looking at it so what is performance piano or performance keyboard many of you have keyboards that have uh, I'll call it pre-programmed backing tracks not just drums or layered sounds but uh, genres of music that you would never think about going into because it may not fit the type of style of music that you are currently able to decipher if you've been watching my uh, promos of my performance track I will be going live and also doing uh, separate videos of me performing songs that are not in the vein of a church service but in the vein of a concert I've got lighting I've got backdrops uh, I'm looking to get a, a much cleaner look or I may just look leave it the way that I had at the last one where you see all, when you see what my works uh, workstation looks like just to, but I just turn off some lights and put up some more blue lights I got a couple more lights that'll give me a, a different uh, view hue hue in, in my in the backdrop with a light coming down I me. Mean, I actually got spotlights up above me here I don't think I can if I see if I turn them on I've got spotlights already up up above me that I used to use so I can use those I can angle them send them in a different direction so and I want to be able to take musicians into what I would call the evolution of their phase you should not always be wanting to learn someone else's new song but you should be now looking to take all that I've been showing you in the breakdowns of all these chords and the and the addition of R&B chords and classical chords and now be able to take any song that you are most comfortable playing and turn it into your own song and hopefully in 2024 have you start your own YouTube channel and begin your journey on YouTube by performing as a musician you would be surprised how many uh, more musicians I am seeing coming on the YouTube platform and performing music and I'm like wow I've never heard of them they've got a nice sound let me see what I can garner from their chords how you doing Sawa? Sawa music that's what I want to be able to do now and I've, as I was trained in church from an old an old bishop your senior bishop he said you can't lead from the rear you have to lead from the front so I'm taking the lead from as sound of joy music services as you can see I'm changing the the statement on my site gateway to gospel music instruction I'm changing the path in which uh, I am out there church music has has evolved I think it's at a it's at a plateau right now where it's going to be there for a while there's nothing new I believe that's going to come out that's going to be revolutionary gone are the Kirk uh, excuse me Kirk Franklin gone are the Andre Crouches the, the Hawkins um, the Thomas Whitfields these guys who whenever they when they came on they were totally opposite of what they were doing but set up set an atmosphere of music that you anticipated what they were going to do next those guys are gone we've got some songs that we've been singing now for 30 years total praise needs to be placed in a hymnal where it should be and pulled out for certain occasions and not be a part of every service or every song fest uh, just like a lot of these songs that um, um, Hezekiah Walker has done they were for that era and maybe 20 years after that but at some point a song needs to be retired not put away to pasture but retired to make space for something new but who will the new songwriters be who will the new composers be who will step up and say well I've got words but I don't have music I have music I don't have words I have words and music but I don't have chords that's where I have positioned myself to be to be able to show musicians who are in their different areas of the country and of the world using a keyboard that comes with pre-programmed sounds where you can take yourself and find your place in the evolution of music 
glad to see the growth in this channel. You all, you are doing a great job. The additions you have made it makes your face look professional. Yeah, I, again, I'm I'm still using the the free version of uh, Streamyard, Streamlabs rather. I I I'm gonna be looking at Streamyards and Restreams. Those are two other platforms which I'm gonna take a look at. Again, they want to be paid, and I can understand that. As I say, the the support that I'm getting from my Patreon page it will make that possible. I'm letting that build up. I'm not going out and just, as I say, cashing in on what I am getting. I can now make a make an investment to see whether or not that is the direction I want to go. When you're the one-man show, as I say, I had an issue earlier where I had lights that the battery would last two hours, then it lasts an hour, then it will last 45 minutes. Finally, I said, you know what, go buy lights you can plug in so that no matter how long you stay on they won't go out so that is what you're seeing right now i've got the better camera now right here i'm still not happy with the image of the color but i think that's the way the lighting is shining at me uh this is the new not new but the if you wanted to support me by getting your sound of joy hoodie this is the um at least the I'll say this is the I think this is the forty-one dollar version. There's one that's actually heavier that I purchased before this one, but this is one that's good to have over a jacket or in this case, if you just want to support, that also is another means of uh, of revenue that allows me to do some more upgrades. Uh, as you can see, I'm on a an actual lapel mic. I have a wireless one which I haven't hooked up yet because this is made for the iPhone. And I believe that, uh, will this program let me do it? No, I don't think this program lets me do it. My other program lets me connect to my iPhone wirelessly. So if a camera went out, I can go right wirelessly to my iPhone, hook it up, and that would be an actual camera. All the things that are, that are av available to me. But, let me again, uh, if I don't keep on, on subject point, uh, I'll, I'll go everywhere. The performance piano. Now, I've been, uh, I've been observant of those who are talking about the latest Yamaha keyboard. If it's not the Nord 5 or the Nade, Nord Stage 4, 4 or 5, whichever it is, each one is $5,000. The new Yamaha MX, I believe is what it's called. Everyone is getting excited over, you know, what it can do. And I'm like, guys, I've got a 2008 keyboard that that you see me play on all the time. And there were hundreds of sounds that I've never let loose because I can't find a hymn that I could put with it. Well, perhaps those sounds were not designed for him, but designed for a different style of music. So this is what I'm going to do in this presentation right now is to go through some of those sounds. Now, I don't believe I set a page up to show the camera I mean to show the keyboard let me see what does this one show okay so this shows here but I want to show the entire keyboard so give me stretch this Should be able to bring the overhead up. There we are. Let's give you a better interpretation. I want to move something out of the way. Let's You must be locked. Yes, you're locked. That's why you won't move. Okay, unlock that. Now I should be able to pull this in front. A 
Okay, good. Got that out of the way. Just trying to move all this good stuff out of the way. Who are you? You stay there. You. You're the one I want moved. Unlock you. Now, you should be movable. You can go right here. And let's get me out of the way. Let's unlock you. Again, got to put all this stuff. Let's move me where I can be noticed, right there. You're not locked, so you can come over here. Okay. I should be able to do this now. Well, you can see the name of the patch. See if you can see the name of the patch. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I got a lot of stuff here. So. Oh, thank you, Sub-Zero. My mic's still being heard. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. I think I'm still being heard. Let's verify this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Testing one, two, three. There we go. I didn't see it moving. I don't know if you didn't hear me all that, all that moving I was doing around. I wanted you to see a 2008 keyboard and with all the talk of investing tons of or thousands of dollars in the in the latest and the greatest to be able to capture a particular sound when you don't quite know what thank you Queen Esther when you don't know what you currently have with you this is what I'm going to be doing for the month of November and, and adding this to all the other series for musicians to find that performer in you. So this is the, I'm set up now for those who may have this keyboard. This is the... know why I'm getting a phone call now nobody ever calls me this is the natural grand sound where everyone is going to be always going to gravitate to the actual sound of the piano make sure that's being heard Okay, so the piano sound, traditional. That's the traditional sound that you're going to find most of your musicians are always going to gravitate to. Then they may go to... Uh, well, okay, we'll go back to that sound. Then the next step is to actual layer it. Now this always layers the strings for that worship sound. Now this version of piano will only layer for, only will layer two sounds to it. But then you can always search through 
your sounds and go to the pads, which is what everyone likes to use also. And you get that after delay. And of course you have so many different pads you can pick from. Some sounds which may not be what you really want, but it's nice to know that it's there. This is when that, that actual performance mode comes in. What kind of an atmosphere do you want to put behind your music? just by selecting a sound. So that's the layered sound. You will find that's where the, the majority of musicians are looking to find a good piano sound, a layered sound, and then of course, if they're in a Pentecostal church that doesn't have a B3, they're gonna go to the organ sound. And they'll search through for the ones that give them the full sound with all the draw bars up. And that's usually one that you will find on the full. This keyboard has excellent organ sounds, not just your traditional Hammond B3, but pipe organ. Um, let me see the pipe organ. Once you get past all of them here. Petty, Flutie, Alternator, Early Bird, Rocky, let's see, these are so many different sounds. Percussive organ, rock organ, tiny combo, okay, Panther. that a lot. So th again, these are the sounds that are on your organ. Let me see. You can entertain a children's uh, setting or group with the different sounds that your potential keyboard can actually do. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, the flutey pipe. St. Peter. St. Paul. This is just to give you the idea that with a keyboard, a in this case it's a 13-year-old keyboard, 2008, 15-year-old keyboard, it's 2003, there are still hundreds, literally thousands of sounds that are never given a chance to be released. Now if you're not an organ player or have ever played on a pipe organ, you won't, you won't know that you can't play a pipe organ like a Hammond. You play a pipe organ if though it's got air rushing into it, so you've got to pause on each of your notes. Your 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 drop two really comes in, into play here. actually played on the electric pipe organ. Um, but that's just, again, 
the different organ patches that you could use. Most people, most churches, I'd say traditional churches, don't believe you had high church until you heard a pipe organ. But that's just one aspect of the different sounds that you could pull out of your potential keyboard that, that you have now. But when you're in the lesson mode, then piano is always the best place to be without all those layered sounds because you don't need those sounds confusing your ear. So you always see me putting a lesson using what I call the, what it's called here for me is the mellow grand piano, which gives me not so much of an actual biting sound, but at least a full sound. Because I like that full fat sound, not that really tinny. Now if I want to go um, in, in a rock sense, then I would go here, a lot sharper. that's done in D flat that has a biting sound. Oh, pass me a knot. Biting sound for that type of style of piano. I have a, a, a Yamaha PSR 700, and I'm planning to buy a second piano with at least six octaves. Uh, well, am I one to deter anyone from investing in the next piano that's going to help them go to that next level? Of course not. But I always like to be able to uh, present the option that if you can. If you've gotten all that you could could have out of the one that you have, then of course move up. I believe the PSR seventy is that sixty one keys. I think everyone should have eighty eight keys weighted to really get the full effect of learning music. Uh, the the starter pianos, which sometimes are seventy six keys or sixty one keys, give you that semi-weighted feel or that that light feeling because of the the quality build that doesn't really give you the full aspect of what a piano if you're in a piano mode feels like now I'll use this this keyboard here and I will do organ patches and I will feel the actual resistance coming back at me because the organ is a very light key that's that's like semi-weighted and the keys are actually a little bit fatter but this helps me this helps me to work on my on my accuracy if i can get a fast run in an organ mode on this piano when i sit down to an actual organ it's, it's not, i'm not even thinking about it just boom i let the fingers just let them just run across great organ and string but from a performance standpoint this is when excuse me when you as a musician get called to do a solo and you're not playing for anyone except the audience what songs will you pick from and then how would you approach that song that's what my what's what my um my performance keyboard performance series is going to introduce to you the non-church approach to to music now yes uh piano 
will always lead in anything that I do because I'm more comfortable doing a piano sound. But then I'll lean to a jazz feel. Nice jazz chord. Arpeggio opening with diminishes and seventh chord. it out that way because I'm laying a foundation for where I want to go. I'm getting a sticky key here again now. This key is starting to stick. I know what to do to fix it. classical sense if I were going to start a song and what approach would I want to approach say uh, some musicians like to do the song it is well and they'll just go right into very basic very choppy but from a, from a an actual performance standpoint you want to go into um, see there we go all those notes that are come before come after taking you into a different world musically without all the layered sounds but you're doing it with an actual piano standpoint. So when I do my, my, um, my separate performances, uh, when they're live, I'll be thinking about what chords I'm gonna be placing in that right at that time. But when it's pre-programmed, I'm gonna take out all the mistakes. But it's a live setting, mistakes can be a plenty because I am thinking where I want to go with the music. What type of a feel do I want? I'm in the actual mellow grand setting now. If I were to go to the, to the concert grand setting, to myself humming, hearing what I want to be doing on the right hand while the left hand is holding me a nice bottom. Taking advantage of what a grand piano sounds like. Just a note. Making mistakes because I'm thinking in my head, gee, I want to do this. Or do I want to do... I go and I find that path that I'm hearing it to give to be in an actual performance mode this is when people actually stop talking and listen because now they're and they're anticipating something that they haven't heard you play or me play before no longer is it just hymn book but it is what is inside of you coming out
So the performance series is going to be giving you tips and techniques that I've heard from others play. Why they hold a note here. How that bottom bass note held with sustain and the higher note splits a person's hearing to hearing the lower note and the higher note and leaving space in the middle for you to do something what I call trickery. If you ever listen to the to the Kirk Franklin songs, he's always playing in the middle right here. for a reason because he knows there's going to be some singing up here and the bass is going to be down here so he's occupying his space for his chords. Let me see. why he's there. The reason uh, my life is in your hand. There's a reason why he's there in the middle because he's leaving that space for him and whoever's singing is above it and of course the other instrument, the lower notes are holding down the bottom. He's holding down the middle right here because this is the sweet spot that is the center of where people, the actual vibration of music hits. When you take time to listen to all the great songs that are out there, which is what I do, whenever I see a song go over a million views, I'll go to YouTube and I'll go listen to that song. I'll go, okay, where's the lowest note? Where's the highest note? And what are they playing in between? And to say what you want about Taylor Swift. I listen to her songs. She uses three chords. Those are her three chords. Let me see. Did she do the G? I believe that's the range that she used in the majority of her songs. And I go, okay, three chords. And 50 million listeners view it, listening to it. And I'm like, okay. Where's the highest note? Where's the lowest note? And where is she placing her voice? She's placing her voice just below the highest notes and sometimes coming into this range here with it. Uh-oh. I was supposed to do something today. Shucks. I'm sorry, I'm getting a, a text that I do something and I was not made aware of it. Excuse me a second, and let me answer this person. Ah. That's why I always turn off the notifications, but I turn it on so that some people can reach me. Sorry to bother you, uh, rather to, to break that down. But as I listen to the performances of the artists who are, gan who are garnering, garner garnishing, or garnering the, the greatest views, I am listening for musically, not lyrically. Some of the lyrics are pretty good sometimes too. But musically, I'm listening to, well, what's happening? What are they doing with the music? What chord, what key are they in number one? What patterns are they using chord wise? And how is the ambiance or the other music moving around it that's around it? 
How is that capturing the listener? Now, sometimes I'll go, uh, but then sometimes I'll go, okay. Okay, just minor, major, minor, minor, and a major, or a major, minor, a major, and a major, and then a major, and then a minor, then a major, and then a major, and then a major. Now, those are the four chords, but her music uses three chords. So, that is what I'm going to be featuring. And again, I didn't cover all the things that this keyboard does. If I were to go to the performance mode on this keyboard, it opens up with a, with a, with a set called Lay It Down. Now, you've heard me use Lay It Down on some songs because I'm able to speed up. Let's see if I can let you see that. That setting, lay it down. I think you can see that. Lay it down. When the keyboard powers up, this is the first patch that it that it comes to. A little more on my mic. Uh, mic. Let's see. One, two, three. I am at almost maximum. Now I'm over pushing it on the microphone. Now I'm looking at it. Hopefully that sounds better. I may have had my head down when I was looking at my phone answering a a um. A, a text message. Lay it down is the very first patch on the uh, on the S70XS that I sometimes go into and use because it has a rock beat. That's the very first patch, and I've always wondered, well, what am I going to do with a rock beat? Well, because you can change the tempo. Turn that down a little bit. Because you can change the tempo, you can do anything you want with it. If I wanted to do, um, let's say I want to do Trouble Don't Last Always, I have to speed it up. Let me see. A little bit too fast. Because now you have. Too, too slow now. Switch the pattern. Maybe I shouldn't have picked trouble, don't last always. Hmm. All right. well, okay, I should cover like this. They give you different options of how you want it to be. This is, and the last one is usually the actual end. But just this one right here. So it's all pre-programmed. I can speed it up. I can I can go to the different variations of it. So in, in a rock sense. So if I want to go, let's see. I'm trying to think of a song I would use in this tempo. Uh, that's why I say whenever you do performance, you almost gotta wash the gospel sense out of your mind, and or find a song that will use that 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 uses these type of beats in it. I'm trying I'm running through my mind now which one I would put here. Let's pull up a different beat. All right, so this one I'm gonna speed up so I can have that gospel feel. Come on. fast of a rock beat 
for that one. But the other pattern gives me a nice one two pattern basically just finding what can you use that is part what is part of the of that particular beat now that's again one of i'm going to say 500 different beats which some which i go into and i go well gee i can't ever use that the next one is, is a is a mid-tempo ballad rock again let's change Now it has split my keyboard for bass and piano with pads. So if I wanted to do this one, which would I go to? I'm thinking of the Hawkins songs. I heard the voice. Now you're going to have to have the ability to separate your thoughts to do bass on your left hand, chording with melody on your right hand. That'll be part of what I'm, I'm going to cover. And I will pick some of the songs which are iconic and some which are not traditional, um, traditional gospel music. Again, gospel music goes, it's, just, it's a spectrum. They borrow from every, every sense of it. Uh, see if I were to speed this up, let's see what's the other beat they give me here. The other beat they give me. The other beat they give me it should be a, a fill. That's a fill, and of course that's the end. If I were to slow that down, it's down to a hundred. Slow it down to 100. I should be able to get Thank You Lord out of this one. Am I trying to put drummers out of business? No. But I'm giving you the musician a better way to now work yourself into an actual performance mode. Would I probably use this one if I was going to do that song? I don't like to split bass where the range is. I would probably lower it down because I'm missing all of my middle chords. The split is right here. I like to have a... I like to have a little more, a little more notes. Maybe split it right here so that I can have 
the, the use of these notes, which means I would have to go into the into the settings and reposition where these where the where the split happens. No need to do that because I don't intend to use this keyboard for my production. But the concept is is that you will have um, some instructions that's going to take you beyond the the actual traditional sound. Now, continue to go piano and orchestra. <laughs> If you're not of the classical, or I should say not the classical, but yeah, the classical, the orchestral setting or scene of where music is always in movement, low, high, middle, at the same time, those settings or patches may not be good for you. Here's one, Abyss of the Sea, which I have no idea what I'm gonna do with. But it may be an opening for some production. One note, but look at what's all been programmed. That that tune. American Beauty, I believe it's a guitar. I mean to have the ability to be um, open to do a lot of different things that you've ever had that you've never done before. Can you try some ballad beat salsa? Ballad beat salsa. I don't have my book out that has the lineup of where everything is. Let's see. Chilling key. Ah, dream ballad. <laughs> not salsa though but there is a world if I were to go into the category search there is a world okay is this what you're looking for <laughs> one called Andy Lucia just trying different songs that again sets a whole different atmosphere if I went to hot salsa 
Again, these are all the different sounds. I didn't have my keyboard back enough for you. Where I am holding chords. I'm just holding a chord. Uh, let's see. You said. Guitar. It's this somber electric. No. Oh. Uh, can't be what you had in, in mind. Bossa Nova on the beach. letting the keyboard pick my chords, pick my bass, and I'm just f forming the chords on my left hand and on my right hand using whatever instrument they gave me to play the song. Now that's, some, that's something that I would probably use because it's basic. It's the kind of sound that is inherent in, 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 in today's music. And um, you will never know musically where you could possibly go if you don't experiment with what you already have. Merengue, I remember, I remember merengue. Yeah. I have to really, Spanish romance, bombastico, Spanish fiesta. So these are all the, the world sounds that you don't hear traditionally in a Pentecostal church. Bubbly dub, which I've never even tried before. Rasta Man's Revenge. That should be bump, 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 bump. I am not too up on the on that sound. Multicultural, Istanbul, ethnic dance, African, which I've done before. I've used that one before. So these are the, I know you were looking for ballad, uh, I was looking for some ballad beats for salsa. That's kind of in the world, in this, on this keyboard, that's where they are found quite a few actually for that style of, of music here. Multicultural, uh, that's your more Arabic.
so many worlds can be opened up you know, from an actual performance standpoint. Let's come out of there. I can scroll through and look to see what we have. We have rock, R&B, jazz, uh, FX, which is your, that's your sine wave stuff. Again, if you do a lot of theme type or type music that is theme based, you will be using all those sounds. I think it's your guitars. <laughs> idea what I would ever do with that sound but it's there it's programmed in someone took the time to program that in there so many of these electrical like they call this electric sounds elect what is he doing that's your that's your your European sound with that bass Electronic, that's what it is, an electric, electronic sound. Built in to this keyboard, which I've never, never, other than right now, I may have gone through it just to see what it sounds like and just kept going, but in a performance state, you now, I would now pay attention to, gee, who's using that kind of sound that is garnishing a lot of views, where, again, not to make it gospel, but to make it an actual performance. I've been here now, uh, I think it's over an hour so far, I believe. So I do appreciate those who have been keeping up with me. Let's change my scene so that uh, I'm back to what I originally started. So the, the, the performance series will touch on the sounds in this keyboard. My actual performances will be the sounds that may feature some from this keyboard because I do like some of them that are not on the Korg the core keyboard is a more refined um, music synthesizer, which is designed to create sequence tracks. So I will be creating tracks of some songs that if I had a drummer, a bass player, horns and strings pre-programmed playing with me, I can now do piano underneath or above or around it. That's what I'm going to be programming. And I may do a, a live series of that actual programming to be able to demonstrate that if you do have a keyboard that does give you the capabilities to program your own music, this is how you would set the metronome, this is how you would count the clock in, this is how you would place a chord or a riff or a an aux sound underneath your playing. Um, I'm trying to think which song would I want to do. I no, I want to do Total Brace. They'll, they will come after me on that one. I will find a song that I can take and build a Total Praise type of theme around it. Again, I'd have to really think about what that song might be. Because I'll have the strings in the beginning. I'll have the lower notes on the bottom. I'll have the high notes. I'll throw a little organ in the background and show that actual production where you can make any song. Uh, let's see, stay away from D flat. That's the total praise key. I might go to, go to B flat. I'd have to see what, what, I, what approach I would want to do, what song I want to do. Number one, it'd have to be a song that could be easily recognized from a, from a, from a melody standpoint and just put all those different changes. I can walk it down, walk it down to yeah. 
Well, anyway, I have uh, enjoyed taking this time now. First Monday in November, November 1st, the 11th month, as we now uh, look to wind down, which has been a very tumultuous year for some. Uh, we're hoping for a good ending to this year, where everyone is going to be hopefully be safe, as you know what's happening. If you're monitoring what's happening in our country and in our world, you will know that it is not a good feeling for millions of people right now. But we, in our environment, if we can help in some kind of way, keep those of us who are in a safe space, I'll put it like that, encouraged through music. That's what I'm looking to do and through my, also through my, through my performance series. So yes, I will be touching on a lot of the Thanksgiving type songs, the leading up to the actual Christmas type songs. I'm going to do Chestnuts. What's this? Chestnuts roasting op over an open fire with the chords da, 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 and showing you how the Nashville chord system is all over that song. Two, five, one, two, five, one, two, five, one. Two, five, one, two, five, one. One going to G. Five one da bum ba bum ba 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 Above one, one plus, and resolved. So yes, we're going to have some fun in the in the performance series as I look to show you all the different. All right, we're going to learn Linus and Linus and Lucy also. I think I do have a one a video that I did do of that. I'll, I'll do another one, slowing it down. Where you go in and you find a jazz beat. Let's see. I know I did one with the uh, with the jazz kit. Let's see if they. Now that's too slow. Give me a real good one. They don't give you much for a jazz kit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and. I can't find the timing on this one. No, this doesn't give me the actual this keyboard does not give me the ability to manipulate the tempo better and give me options as the Korg does but uh, that's what we're going to be looking at though we're going to have some fun as we wind up the last two months of this year still uh, we will be doing the viewer request I've been doubling up some of them uh, in fact, I got a request to do First Noel by Yoan Kim. That just came in last night. I haven't listened to that one yet, but I'm going to assume uh, Johan Kim is a familiar name to me. I think I've heard some of his his videos. In fact, while I've got you on live, let me just listen to what that is. Because I hope it's a song and not just a musical piece. 
I don't break down musicians and the way that they play because that's like a a a signature let's see Noel I've got two screens here I'm looking at I'm covering up first Noel by Johan Kim okay Just so I can hear what I'm going to be subjecting my ears to. First Noel. Yes, I thought the name was familiar. Tremendous Asian musician. I've watched his videos and in awe of his ability to articulate gospel music. So this is, will not be one I will be breaking down because this is the, this is the if it's a song choir verse choir based song for you to learn for your choir that's what I primarily do I will not break down another musician's song unless he's playing for a choir and I'm, what I'm looking at right now this is this is just him playing so I don't do that there are other musicians who do a tremendous job breaking down musicians that's their specialty breaking down musicians is not one that i that i want to delve into because it, it will require me immersing myself in not just that one song but in several songs to hear what is the thought process behind what they do and i'd rather be learning soprano alto parts around a gospel song and then presenting that as a lesson versus breaking down another musician who is a talented musician so that's one request. I'm not sure if the if the requester is on live right now, or will be seeing the replay. But I will not be breaking. Like I'll answer his his request on the on the comment page of that video that he commented. I don't break down musicians. I break down songs for musicians to learn to play for their choir or to improve their their hearing of songs. So thank you all who have been watching. I think we've got as high as 11 people in the room. Uh, Sawa Music, I want to thank you. Louis, Queen Esther, Louis Bentley. I think I did say Louis, didn't I? Not Mr. Yeah, there is Louis. Uh, Sub-Zero, Andre, and I believe, yes, those are all who have commented. Thank you for coming in, spending some time. I am working on this set of new look for the, for the site. As you can see, I have a new banner that I worked on last night, Gateway to Gospel Music Instruction. That's what I want to be, is when you have a question, you have somewhere to go, and the gate, at least my gate to the mindset that I use in instructing, is open to musicians to get a better understanding that which they have dedicated their life to learning. D.B. Moshe, thank you. How are you doing? I don't know if you're just coming in or you caught the end of the stream. This will stay up. I merely, I did probably talking most of it in conversations about thanking those who have been su uh, supporting me the past 10 months of this year. As I I'm going to um, repeat, you have doubled my views. I used to average 25,000 views a month and I always wanted to see how can I get to more views. And this year from January on, this has been anywhere from 49 to as high as 60,000 views per month that has increased my my awareness to the YouTube um, YouTube world it actually pushed me out there a little further what I will do sometimes is I will type into the YouTube search engine gospel music piano and I want to see how where does my channel rank amongst the ones that YouTube is pushing out there and sometimes I go through four or five pages before I get to me and I see, so what am I doing wrong? Is the way I'm wording it? Is it my picture? Do they not want to see my face? Is it not what I'm doing? So I always go back to the drawing board and go, well, gee, take my face off the page or put my face on the page, put this wording in, take that wording out. Uh, so now I think if I were to go into YouTube and type in gospel piano, let's go with lessons. Let's see if I've been moved up in the algorithm. Uh, dum, 
There I am. I'm on there for live right now, number three. That's rare. I've never seen me as number three. So it punches up now number three because I'm on live, probably because no one else is doing something live. So that means that's that's an encouragement to me that I got to do some more live breakdowns of viewer, re viewer requests because I'm being pushed up in the algorithm. Let's see if I go down. Uh, let's see. I see some more people. I see more people, more people. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen people ahead of me, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Go to the next page, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Going down, twenty five. These are all people that are ahead of me. Okay, so I'm still. Ah, there we go. Something from 11 years ago pops up as number 29. And then, uh, wow, more, more, more. Okay, there's a lot of guys out here. Not just me. I'm not the only one. And new ones are coming on seemingly every day. So I still got to work on this, I see. I'm still, whoa, before you get to me, you've got to 50 others. And there's still more, still more, still more, still more, still more. I'm going, I'm on page 10 now, and I've had two entries. One is the live I'm doing now, and one is one I did 11 years ago. So, yeah, I still got some work to do to get the page promoted. But, as I say, I'm appreciative of the double of the amount of views I've been getting. Because you've been able to help, I am monetized since 2020. After after 10 years of waiting to be monetized, so I've taken advantage of the fact that let me just get some good information out there, so people will want to view it, people will want to share it, people will want to click on the like button, people will want to subscribe and leave a comment, so that YouTube will promote me, hopefully better than what I'm seeing right now. So far, I think I've gone through 50 other people before one of my 2020 videos show up. So I, I've got some work to do. And that's okay. That's all right. I love a challenge. I love a challenge. So now my challenges are going to be for the remaining of this year is how to get my, my, uh, my presentation of learning gospel music higher in the algorithm. So maybe you'll, somebody will swipe 10 times before they see me. Not 50 times as I've as I've been able to watch, but thank you all again. I'm not I am not complaining. I'm thankful because just to see the double in 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 uh, in viewership, YouTube analytics does comment to me your views are up, which means that your ad revenue is up. That means the advertisers are recognizing that you've got more viewers than you've had before, and they always put in there continue the type of content that you're doing and continue growing your channel. And that's what I'm looking at doing is to continue growing the channel and being a support. Those on my Facebook page, um, I may have to cut down what I'm sharing with you on Facebook so that you will come to YouTube and be a, a viewer here. Or just keep putting a link over there from, from YouTube to the Facebook page. But come over to the YouTube channel, Sound of Joy, all one word, and become a subscriber and look at some videos and do me a couple of likes because that helps to push me up from number 50 plus maybe to number 49. That'd be a nice spot to move from wherever I am now up to number 49. But I do appreciate again all that you have been doing. I'm going to say thank you, Sound of Joy Music Services. As always, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Take care until next time.